Hi everyone, it's uh, Dutch Reefer here, and welcome to this new Focus Friday video. Today I will be doing an update on coral recovery after doing a tank migration a little over three months ago. So as you might know, doing a, uh, uh, a tank migration is uh, uh, quite a heavy impact on uh, your tank's inhabitants, um, being your fish and your corals of course. Um, and um, so that's why I thought it was a good idea to uh, give you an update after uh, a little over three months to show you uh, how everything is progressing, um, some things that went well, some things that went a little less, uh, a little less good, and uh, meanwhile uh, trying to cope with the, the image turning from blue to purple all the time. So let's uh, see if it uh, <laughs> relaxes a bit and uh, get started. So there's a few corals in this image that you see right now that uh, have uh, di different stories. Um, let's start off with uh, with two uh, good ones. So this uh, Goniopora and this Elegance coral, just on the right behind it, these have been uh, doing uh, really well. Uh, actually the elegance coral has never been better so ever since I've migrated it to this tank somehow it uh, exploded from day one and uh, never ceased to do amazing so it's actually the base is uh, really small uh, but somehow it expands a lot so as you can see it's um, on both sides it has a uh, uh, has the fleshed tissue both on the top and on the bottom um, well, in reality, it's just uh, the skeleton is just flat-like, with a, of course, triangle-like, but, but yeah, it's not shaped like this in any way. Then this Goniopora, this flower pot coral, uh, has been doing okay uh, since uh, about one and a half months. So before that, it, it was a bit soaky. It had its uh, moments, but it also, uh, uh, well, sometimes didn't didn't do so well. Um, yeah, these are just hard corals to measure, uh, but if they're doing okay, then you can assume that your other LPS will also be uh, fine, because Goniopora are used to, uh, or are very known as very, uh, well, corals that can easily uh, die when you're not, when they don't like uh, the water parameters. Um, so one of the pieces that has really uh, deteriorated and withered is this uh, what used to be a goniopora right here. Um, there is still some tissue left, but it's very minimal and looks very bad. Uh, so that has been slowly dying off and um, I don't assume it ever coming back either. Then there's this uh, big toadstool leather coral, uh, which um, has its moments. I think right now it's it's either doing one of two things. It's being eaten by my uh, uh, Pigoplitas uh, emperor um, because it has some holes in it and it could also be doing this on its own. Um, and then hopefully returning in a better shape because that's what they sometimes do. Um, but yeah, well, let's see. It's... Uh, not looking good right now, but uh, for example yesterday it was doing just fine. So it's a bit hard to judge by just the image as it is now. Uh, the the, the um, Euphilias are doing uh, well, pretty well I can say. They're growing, that's the most important one. Um, of course the uh, clownfish are in these, they have been here for a long time. Um, well, they're defending their territory here as well. Um, Despite the blue image, you can still see the uh, the nice contrast that these fish have uh, in these uh, in these corals. Did somehow hope that it would uh, jump ship to this uh, Euphilia on the back here, the torch, uh, but they didn't. So, uh, but it looks uh, it looks nice there in the middle. Um, so, antis wise, some have been doing amazing, like for example these uh, Sunny D's or Sunny Delights, as you might uh, know them by. These have been growing steadily and uh, doing well. Same goes for these uh, other zoanthus right here. Um, the thing is also 
the thing is that uh, they uh, they are on the menu of the Pigoplites um, angelfish. So depending on uh, how the mood of the Pigo is, uh, you <laughs> you'll see some zoanthus disappearing uh, now and then. Uh, but so it's always a, a risk keeping one of those fish. Uh, I'm willing to take this risk, uh, but uh, yeah, I can imagine that if you're a very oh, there's something very beautiful happening here. One of the uh, it's opening its gills for the cleaner fish to clean. Ah, well, you missed you maybe you saw a little bit of that. So here's the Pigoplites, uh, which I just mentioned. It's uh, a very beautiful fish indeed, but it comes at a cost. It eats corals, it likes LPS, it likes zoanthus, and sometimes it will nibble at one of your chalices or one of your zoas. But as you can see, there's plenty here, and uh, well, I don't mind it uh, taking a bite or two, uh, but that's for you to decide. They are beautiful fish, but they come at a cost. So this Montipora, uh, this green one, is also doing uh, pretty well. Uh, overall, the SPS, as you can see up here, are doing okay. They're not uh, in their best uh, state, but then again, they are still healthy, uh, healthy enough to uh, to pull through. Um, so this green stylophora and this purple green stylophora, colors are a bit distorted, as I mentioned before, but you'll get the idea. So these SPS have been doing okay. The simpler SPS. Um, Also, yeah, actually most LPS are doing quite well and have recovered quite without much trouble. So they all have a day or two where they are not happy. Um, so for the, that goes for these Ricordea, uh, that goes for the normal Zoanthus, but it also goes for the Duncans, Duncan corals. Sometimes these colonies have off days, uh, especially after a migration. And uh, as long as they come back, uh, to uh, their previous state after a few days, then you're good. Um, so yeah, all in all, they have been doing uh, doing okay. One of the chalices that has been uh, eaten by the uh, pigo as well is this uh, red chalice. As you can see on the bottom part, uh, yeah, it uh, it's on the menu as well. A special mention I wanted to give to this uh, Goniopora. It's uh, I don't know if there's a special name for it. I just call it Goniopora. Um, I have tried shown this before, and that has continued. Uh, this one is slowly dying. I cannot deny that. I cannot uh, get around that fact, since the the flesh has retracted quite a bit already. Um, but somehow, every day it's like this. It's happy, uh, or at least it looks happy. But somehow, mm -hmm. in the end, it's going to uh, wither, which is a shame because I really like it. It has, it has been in my tank for, I guess, about two years now. But then there's no denying; eventually, it will, uh, it will pass. As goes with uh, most corals in uh, in a tank, of course. Alveopora are newly added in this tank. They are also doing uh, doing quite well. Um, Usually alveoporas are a little easier to keep than goniopora's and actually they don't have much off days either. They're actually uh, looking great uh, most of the time. And all in all, there's two more corals that I want to show you. Uh, that's this uh, acropora or actually uh, milipora, uh, which uh, is showing signs of recovery but has been doing, has been struggling for quite a while. It's still not back to its colors since it should be green with uh, with pink and this definitely takes more time, more than three months to uh, to recover and uh, frankly same goes for this Montipora right here uh, has been on and off uh, for a while uh, sometimes it does well, sometimes it doesn't so it's really s strange because Montiporas are known for being very easy to keep corals, but somehow it's not recovering well from this uh, tank migration. Um, all in all, I'm quite happy with the progress after three months. Uh, could have been worse, uh, but definitely also could have been better. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this update, and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!